Hey, 4C Divers, thank you for tuning in. It is June 22nd of 2022, and we have Gary. Hey, Gary, how's How it going? going? Good. All right. So, uh, guys, if you've been following our um, 4C events, uh, you've noticed that it is our time to get in the water and go diving. Summer is here. So if you want to learn some new dive skills or if you're not a diver yet, uh, give us a call and we'll get you booked in a class or maybe even take you out diving to log some dives if it's been a while. Um, so give us a call. And also, uh, if you guys are new to our Facebook Live, make sure that you say hello to us. Tell us where you're listening in from and go to the link on our website, www.force-e.com. Go to the event tab, scroll down, find tonight's event and register before 645 because we're going to be raffling off a mask and not just any mask. Gary, are we going to be mask? Which one? Oceanic Shadow. And by, I think you could probably have any color you want, which you have about four or five different colors. Yep. So, nice awesome. mask. Awesome. All right. So if you guys want to win, you got to register. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and tell you what the topic is. It's going to be scuba masks, Facebook Live. We got a lot of people coming into the dive shop and they're like, you know what? I've never bought a mask before or, you know, I've had one for a long time and I want to upgrade uh, or they have one and it's leaking on them and they just, they, you know, didn't do the correct uh, fitting techniques to make sure that doesn't leak. So we have the master of the scuba mask, which is Gary, <laughs> Mr. Gary Thomas. All right. So Gary, let's go ahead and... Talk about the history of a face mask. I mean, I've been diving for a while. I started when I was a kid. However, I did not start when you saw this particular mask that you see on the screen. That was very popular back in the early 70s when I started, the oval <laughs> mask with the little finger wells. So uh, yes, old style mask. It was really hard to get in there and equalize your nose, right? Especially with your regulator, you had to use two fingers to go in and to equalize, pinch your nose to equalize. Um, so actually, back in the early 1900s is when they started making masks like this. Uh, the first diving mask was actually invented by some French guy, I can't even pronounce the name, in 1933. Um, and then in the uh, 1950s, Cressy introduced a mask um, which actually had the dedicated nose pocket, so you didn't have to do this. The finger was, yes, the Pinocchio type. Mm -hmm. And uh, just recently, we, I think we carry a couple of these old style. We did. In fact, we just sold one the other day. I had one I was going to show you and it's uh, can't find it. So we must have sold it. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. Nowadays, what do um, scuba masks look like? Well, uh, they're a lot more slim and streamlined. They got more colors, um, different types of variations. So, Gary, we're going to go ahead and dive into that, right? Yes. Okay. So let's first talk about some questions. If you're new to buying a mask or you've, it's been a while, um, there is always, why is it important to own your own mask? What do you think, Gary? Uh, first of all, sanitary reasons, I would think. And then again, if your mask leaks on you, you're not gonna have fun. So you need to have a mask that's gonna fit you. Mm -hmm. And people ask me this all the time. Uh, how long does a mask last you? That all depends on how you take care of it. If you rinse it off every time and keep it in the house and keep it in the case, uh, it lasts you quite a while. Absolutely. Um, and then the big question, how do I select the right mask for me? So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. So Gary, let's talk about the glass. Scuba masks have different types of glass. Go ahead and uh, tell everybody what I got a little spiel down that I use when I go over face masks, but basically as, as far as the glass itself, it's uh, tempered glass. They do have masks that are tinted also. Cakes that have a tint to them also, all right, but it is still tempered glass. Then you're going to need a frame to hold the lens into place, non-corrosive. Some of the older masks had, like the first one we showed you, had a stainless steel band. Now they're plastic, or we do have masks that are frameless, which the glass sets up into a groove and is sealed. So uh, basically it's a non-corrosive fit. Then you need adjustable straps with locks. You can see here on this one, very easy. You just pinch the two little clips here, pull your strap wherever you want, let go and it locks into place. 
Uh, and then also you need two seals. Most of them will have two seals. You have an inner seal here and you have an outer seal here. Ideal way to have this fit is to go ahead and when you try it on to make sure this inner seal is touching all the way around and you want it to come beyond your eye socket or even with the eye socket, not inside the eye socket because it could obstruct your vision. So there you go. I'm gonna fit it on my face. We can get to okay, that if you okay. want to. Yeah, but those every mask up here, again, this could be overwhelming walking into, we have four cubby holes with masks and it could be overwhelming, but almost every mask that we have on the wall has those features that I just went over. So now we need to get in and to fit somebody. So there are a couple techniques that we use. I guess I can go ahead and use this one. But <laughs> what we do is what we put this up to the face and we can actually demonstrate with Nicole here. We want to have the head tilted back. We can put this in place, make sure that inner, the inner seal is coming on the outside of the eye socket and then let her inhale through her nose and see if that inner seal touches. And if you look in, you can see that it comes beyond and it's touching. Not guaranteed that that mask is going to fit you, but that's a good start. Another technique, as I like to call it, the sniff method, where you just put it right up to your face, make sure it's right up under the nose, and then you just sniff it into place and see if it stays. You don't want to have to push hard to get it to seal. Just very lightly get up and inhale. This one's not fitting correctly on myself. It's not saying. So our faces are a little bit different. So then we have to go to a different mask. That's where our sales associates will come in. And when you walk in, we'll look at your face and help you select the right mask. So can I ask a question? Yes. I've also been told that if there's a little bit of a gap when you push back here, that it's not going to seal. That's, you're, you, you're correct. So again, that's how you don't want a gap at all going around that mask at all. So those two ways that we're going to try to fit you one time with a mask. But here's the good thing, that one thing that 4C's policy, their 45-day guarantee, you will walk out of here with a mask. If it doesn't fit you, you can bring it back and try another one. So we can almost guarantee 99.9% .9 of the time we're going to fit a mask, have a mask that fits you. Can I ask something about the silicone? Yes. Um, over the years, it's gotten from the like, really hard silicone to like this really soft silicone. So what's the different grades? They start out with, uh, again, years ago, all we had were rubber masks in the 70s and the 80s. And then they came out with the silicone and there's different grades of silicone. And TUSA, actually, they have a machine where they blow air into their silicone where it's very, very soft. So there are some masks where the silicone, silicone the grade isn't as high as some of the other ones, the softer the silicone, the better it's gonna contour with your face. So that's another thing to look for. Absolutely. Okay, colors. Everyone always wants to know. We colors. have a lot of the, uh, even the, the all mask we'll have here, even though they are frameless, will have different colors. So we have the oceanic shadows, the be shots, the excess scuba, they all, most of them will come frameless like this in different colors. And then we do have uh, frameless on the Aqualung. This one here also different colors with uh, be able to match it with your snorkel and your bathing suit and anything <laughs> else you're trying to match. So Yeah, but tell us more. Black versus clear skirts. That is all personal preference. Absolutely. So if you want light to come in, then the clear is going to be for you. If uh, it, it doesn't matter to you, then you can go with the black silicone. Either one of them are going to do the same. The same grade is silicone, so it's they're good. It's a good mask. Okay, so let's talk about, since we talked about the silicone that goes around your face, what about the strap itself? Straps. So again, I showed you the feature of having adjustable straps with, with locks. So again, the, the, the one that we showed you here, where you can just, again, pinch these two knobs here, pull your strap, and let go and it locks into place other ones you have to lift up a little bit here and then pull it which way you want to and let go and then it locks into place so the different different uh, adjustments there they also have neoprene straps now this one you would undo one side of the strap put the strap through here and this would be on the back of your head which would prevent hair from uh, being pulled it's some of them open up that one i don't that one does so here you would open it up, put it right around your strap here, Velcro it back. 
There you go. Other way, other straps too. We have a couple different ones. This one here we have in Velcro. So here would be a total replacement. You would actually take this strap out, this one here, and then you would put on this one with the Velcro, just open it up, lace it through, and then you would Velcro it whatever positions you want to to make it nice and snug. Uh, and then we also have one that has a buckle here. So this is, those are the three types that we have. So uh, again, these prevent the hair from being pulled. Um, nice. You don't nice really have, bundle. you don't have that problem, do you? I don't have that problem. <laughs> but us ladies uh, or men, there are some men have long hair. Um, this gets tangled in all the different straps and especially in your snorkel and stuff. And so I know a lot of us, we like to use those. We also sell, we just don't have any here at the store. We have ones that have um, a hole in there. So if you want to put your ponytail through it, you can do that too. A lot of uh, women like that one because again, they put their ponytail and where's that ponytail position high in the middle, down low, where you can actually put it right in the middle because that's where you want your strap kind of even with your eyes in the back, which isn't going to pull down or pull up on the mask itself. So Gary, can you actually, um, since I'm going to put this on, show them where the strap placement should be? Actually, this strap should be pretty close to where it is right now. You can't see her ears, but you want it above her ears. And also, again, dead center where the mask itself and the strap are almost parallel with one another. That's going to give you a better seal. Again, sometimes if it's up high, it pulls up too far on the mask, and then your little nostrils, uh, little piggy nose is about ready to come out. And then if it's too low, it's down over your ears, and it's pulling down, and it's not going to give you the best seal. So there you go. That's a little too low. Plus that, you can see how low it is on her nose too. So and uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> I've actually seen students that they their ear, ears are literally folded over, and it looks so uncomfortable to them. Yes. And it, and also it makes it so that it doesn't seal properly. Right. So you talked about having that inner seal. Yes, very important for the inner seal. So and again, having it touch because then you have two seals touching, which is going to prevent twice from the water coming in. So. And another thing too is with the seals, um, you gotta check the eyebrows because if your eyebrows are inside that seal, it pulls and you can also have right. some pulls here. Some people some have some people have rounded foreheads mm -hmm. uh, and narrow faces and some people have big noses. So then we would try to fit them possibly into a mask that has side windows to it. Again, what that does here brings that skirt further back and that's going to give them more room into the nose area. And also this is a little wider face for people to have wide faces. So we can always fit you with something like this too. And people like the side windows because it gives you the peripheral vision that you can't really hone in on anything, but you can actually see movements out here. So nice feature on a mask too. So another thing is where the nose pocket is positioned. You talked about someone with a big nose. Because if you have, you talked about the piggy nose, if you have it touching that nostril, you're not going to be able to get a good seal. And it's also hard, hard to, to pinch your nose. Pinch your right? nose. So um, if you have, here's a technique I learned. If you have issues getting your nose this way, you can reverse your hand like this and go in this way. Um, but I also know <laughs> there's sometimes a purge at the bottom. So how do you... And those. we do have some masks still out there that have uh, purges. We have the Clarity that has purges. This one here is a sea dive, has a little purge in here. And this is kind of nice. It's uh, not really hard to clear them anyway if you just kind of get the technique down. But some people still have a little difficulty. They want to pull it too far away from the face when they're trying to clear it. So this one, all you do is have it up on your face. You push in on it lightly and exhale, still tilt back a little bit and exhale out your nose. And it will come out this one way valve here. Um, always have to make sure there's nothing in between this oversized valve otherwise it'll leak so you still have a little bit more maintenance to it but some people love the mask with purge jaws. absolutely so let's talk about the volume that's in your mask you can have masks that have a lot of air volume versus a low volume mask um, tell us a little bit about those masks a lot of the free divers will like the uh, lower volume mask because it has less distortion and it's easier to clear and it's more streamlined when they're doing free diving. So, uh, by the way, this is a mask here that we talked about tempered glass. This one has plastic. This is about the only one on the market that I know of that's a top quality mask that is a plastic lens. And uh, a lot of free divers love this mask because of the sleek design, the curvature of the frame itself. And as they're free diving down, it's less drag, less uh, 
uh, strain on. So that's a nice little mass too, but that's low volume. So compared to the one I showed you here was with much more volume. You can see that it's a bigger mass. So uh, again, going to clear, it's going to take a little bit uh, more to clear it. Sometimes two breaths versus one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's time to talk about how to treat your mask. So you bought the mask, you want to go use it, but you jump in the water and you realize it's all foggy. Why is that, Gary? Because of the condensation. Hopefully you've gotten the technique down that when you use scuba, you inhale through your mouth and you exhale out your mouth. If you exhale out your nose and you've got water temperatures in the 80s or the 70s, the air that you're blowing out is you're going to get condensation. So uh, one way to help that besides using defog is to prep it first. Plastic mask, you wouldn't use that. You're going to use dish soap. Uh, the tinted mask here, you can't use a scrub, it's too abrasive. You'd want to use dish soap to clean that lens to get the silicone mist that the manufacturer has on the mask itself. But once you clean it, here, you're going to scrub it uh, with a scrub. And what we do is we have separate or we have this uh, 500 PSI combo here, which is one is the scrub, one is the defog. But what you want to do is you want to put the scrub in and scrub it very hard with the cloth, wet it a little bit, rinse it out, and then you can exhale into the mask itself and see if you get any condensation. If you get condensation, go ahead and clean it again. You might have to do it multiple times. Then every time you get into the water, make sure you put a little bit of defog on the lens and smear it around a thin coat. But I see on the boats, if people put the size of a, a squirt of a dime or a nickel, they smear it around and they put it on and it's so hazy they can't see out of it. Then what they do is they put it in the rinse bucket and they wipe it. Well, you just wipe the defog off. Mm -hmm. So again, a thin coat of defog just before you get in the water, dip it a couple times and you're ready to go. So there you go. Use the scrub, then defog every time you get into the water. And periodically, you're going to have to clean it anyway with the scrub because it gets a film with the salt water, mm -hmm. uh, this, that. You're going to have to clean it periodically. So have both of them. I actually use a nice soft bristle toothbrush um, to clean sometimes because if you leave this out and you don't treat it right, you can get this nasty mold, right? Yes. So you can kind of pull the skirt away and clean out under from underneath there, clean it out in the inside using a little soft uh, toothbrush to get that stuff out if you do have issues. But be aware, you're going to see it more on a clear skirt versus a black skirt. So you might actually have mold in your mask right now. So everybody go get your mask after this presentation and check it out because you do not want to be diving with that in your mask because uh, it makes you sick. So another thing too, can I mention? Go ahead, go ahead. Back in the day, before they had all these cute little defogs, people used to go and spit into their mask. Right in there, rub it all in, and then they'd put it in the community rinse bucket. And now with COVID, that's the last thing we want to do is be no. spreading COVID. <laughs> so, but I do know a lot of the boats have gotten rid of their mask bins because of that fact. They don't want people <laughs> putting their uh, masks in a communal bin. So a lot of boats have the rinses, like a, like a hose or a, um, a type of... Um, and trust me, I did it both ways, and the defog works the best. Every time. So you're trying to put a film across the lens so that when you exhale, maybe out, out of your nose or whatever, you don't get the condensation on the lens. So defog is going to work the best. Absolutely. Um, so, can I really, add one other thing too? As sure. far as the, the storing these masks, you want to make sure that you have these. If you buy them and you get a case, I would keep these in a case. You keep them in a gear bag and Hopefully you don't leave it in the garage because in the garage you're going to have, it's going to last you less time because of the heat, et cetera, but keep it in the house. But also palmetto bugs, people come in here mm -hmm. and you see the edges of the skirt being chewed and they come in, what's going on here with this uh, uh, skirt? And right out of the gate, I know what it is. It's palmetto bugs. So when everybody has them, I don't care how sanitary, how clean you are, palmetto bugs are everywhere. So make sure that you keep this in the case. And we ask how long you think a mask could last you. You're just going to extend the life of your mask. I started diving when I was 12 and I still have my mask from when I was 12. I don't there use it anymore, okay, but all right, all right, it's like so. a relic, you know, it's one of those big, you know, 
looks like an aquarium on my face. <laughs> um, but also, Gary, some questions coming from the audience. They talked about the purge. Yes. Is, is that only for a snorkel mask or people can dive with the purge in their nose? You can have a purge valve in a dive mask or snorkel. Mm -hmm. Snorkel, it's uh, kind of nice because you don't have to lift your head up to drain the water out. If you get a little bit of water in it, you just kind of push it to your face, look straight ahead and blow out your nose, look down a little bit, whatever makes the purge valve the lowest point, and then exhale out your nose. But divers could use it too. Just again, there's a little bit more maintenance of that one-way valve, that oversized valve. You have to make sure there's no sand or salt buildup in there because it could leak on you. Since we're talking about that area, someone's asking about mustaches. Yes. Okay. Some and men have mustaches. <laughs> and and if, if that's the case, what you can do is you can keep it very short. Uh, you can also, they have uh, silicone grease that you could use to uh, help it seal. And they do have a mustache wax that we sell that you could put on the mustache and, and uh, help seal. But yes, it's uh, definitely have to be aware of the mustache and not uh, sealing correctly. And again, sometimes you have just a little bit of water in the nose area of your mask. That's just the way it is. You just mm -hmm. get used to it. So. You do, because remember, you're a mouth breather. Yes. <laughs> also, ladies, get those wispies out from underneath that skirt. So you have to make sure your hair is out of there. Um, actually, some long haired men have that issue, too. Um, a, a lot of us girls, we like to wear the headbands, like the sport headbands. Right. We actually sell those here at Four Seas. Right. Really hoods cute. and diving hoods in the winter months. So mm -hmm. same thing. You got to make sure that that's not uh, uh, interfering with the seal of the mask to your face. So, Gary, can you talk? Sometimes um, I've noticed like this is a very common looking mask, but some of them usually have like like a deep V to the to them. Is that harder to get the water out when you're trying it to clear is, it? It is. If it's a deeper uh, skirt frame that brings it away from your face, you just have to tilt your head back further. That's why we always tilt our head back to make the nose area the lowest point so that when you do a large nose, you'll expel all the water. But some of those masks, that shape, it is a little bit harder to get that last half inch down here at the very bottom. But uh, you'll get the technique, just lean your head back a little bit uh, further than you normally do or would have to with some mask. And sometimes I've noticed with my students, what they'll do is they go back and they go to like the side and not like straight back. And so that's why it's keeping it in that. Or little... they pull one side out mm -hmm. over the other. And so when you go to clear it, you need to make sure that you pull evenly away from your face, both sides. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you will have a little bit of water left in one side of the, uh, the face mask itself. So. So we're talking about lenses. I know a lot of people out there need to either have readers or prescription okay. glasses. Uh, a lot of people dive with their contacts, but if you did want to have a prescription lens, we can send that off to? We have a company that we send them off. We just need your prescription. Uh, and it's uh, Dive Side is the name of the outfit, but you bring it in with your prescription. We could send it off and have your exact prescription ground on a lens and then glued to the existing lens of the mask. We do have a couple of masks in stock, uh, the Cressy Focus and the Clarity that we have some lenses in stock, but they're not corrected for astigmatism. So if you have astigmatism, you're going to have to send it out to get your exact prescription. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit uh, uh, blurry for you. It's not going to be an exact prescription. And then you have these. If you only need readers, then they do sell this Dive Optics here, and they come and start at a 1.0 go all the way up to a 6, uh, 7.0 on the uh, diop diopter. And basically, you just wet your mask, and you're going to put them right into the bottom of here, of your uh, of your mask there. And there you go. Now you should be able to read your gauges or uh, whatever else you're trying to do with it. Um, another thing someone's asking is, how tight should your mask strap be? That's a good question. If it fits you, those two techniques that we showed you of putting up here, no gap, uh, or doing the sniff test. Usually, you're not going to have to tighten that strap down and plaster that mask to your face. Otherwise, you have a ring around your face, and also, you could get a headache. Uh, some people are very sensitive on their lip up here, so having that mask strap very tight, uh, they come up and they have a little pain here. So, uh, basically, uh, it shouldn't have to be that tight at all. It's... Whatever it takes to where you can keep that water out. Okay, Mr. Gary, one of your favorite four sea divers is right here, Miss Alyssa. And believe it or not, we do have, uh, you can look at masks. Don't stop. 
He's going to fit you for a mask. Okay, guys. All, all masks, very quickly, will come in. Here's the same mask, but you can see that it's two different sizes. So when you walk into the store, we're going to actually look at your face and suggest the uh, bigger face, wider faces go with the bigger mask. Smaller faces go with the smaller one. But they even have masks that are small enough for kids. So they give you the age group of uh, 6 to 12. But again, some 12-year-olds wear adult masks. Their faces are so wide. So we do have masks, snorkel fins for kids. And uh, let them sort of join the ocean, too, and something we can all do, do to bond have, together. Do we have the clarity mask right there? We do have a clarity. So I've noticed that a lot of the kids that I'm teaching, uh, the clarity fits their face really nicely. So Alyssa, can you put this on for us? Mm -hmm. Do you have this mask? What color is this mask? Pink. She has a pink one at home. And there it is. So this is a really good mask for kids, but it's also um, like women do really well on this mask. Um, there's some other ones like the, the Tusa one is really good um, for smaller framed uh, faces. Why this is works well with most faces. This is actually the clarity. I was talking about the prescription mask that they have lenses for, because if you look at it, the skirt comes further back here, which a lot of people that taper in through here, this is yeah. nice because it comes back to that tapered area and prevents water from coming in. So the Clarity is a very nice mask and it's priced right. It's uh, only $49.99, which is a great deal on it. Lenses, I think, are $36 a piece if we have the lenses in yeah. stock. So <laughs> Does everybody yeah. like Alyssa? Everyone gives a thumbs up or a heart emoji if you're enjoying this one. She loves yeah. to be on Facebook. <laughs> All right. See you later, kid. All right. So, um... We talked about treating the mask um, and the different solutions. Um, we talked about storing the mask um, and then also about the prescription lenses. Um, is there anything else that we can talk about as far as prepping the mask? Uh, do you suggest people go and try it in their pool to make sure it doesn't leak before they take it out? You, well, definitely before you go out in the ocean, you want to make sure that it's not leaking and it'll ruin your dive. So if you have a pool, definitely to do that. And, uh, you know, your facial structure changes when you put that snorkel between your lip and gum or put the regulator. So at that point, that's why here in the store we can say, OK, it looks good. Everything this is what we want, those two techniques that we're looking for. But it, you only know until you get into the water, put that snorkel or regulator between your lip and gum and reshape your face. And then you'll get the uh, to, to see if it fits you or not. So uh, definitely try it in the pool before you get out and spend the money on a boat and not have a great dive. Okay, so everybody, um, we talked about uh, and all the masks. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section. We're going to set up right now to do our raffle. So, Gary, what is the raffle item that we have? We have the Oceanic Shadow Mask. Again, it's uh, your choice of color, which comes in a seafoam green, yellow, pink, black, and clear. Okay. And I'm not able to get the random name picker to pull up right now. So we're going to, I mean, for you guys to see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it. And da -da 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 Chantel Wolf. Chantel, if you are watching, give us a woohoo. You are a winner for tonight's raffle. Chantel. Nice strap. Look at that. Huh? All right. We will write you a email so that you know where to get it from. All right. Um, and if you guys have any questions, uh, Gary, where can they find you? Boca Raton 4C. Mm -hmm. And again, don't forget our uh, satisfaction guarantee because there's really no other place to go and purchase a mask and make sure you'll get it right. Absolutely. We have lots of uh, different staff here uh, that have been working for us for many years. Gary's one of our, like, how many years have you been with us? Uh, 40 something. What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can get paid for this gig, right? I... Well, I'm going to pay you in beer. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yay. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> All right. So guys, come on in, see Gary or see any of our staff members. They will get you fitted for a mask so you get it right so that you have an enjoyable dive and always go to www.forstashe.com for all of our events and other tips. And also you can shop online. All right. Thank you so much, Gary. Happy Thank you diving. all for Happy watching. Diving. We'll see you later. Bye.